In this video, I'm gonna show you how to implement a multi-pane layout, or a list and details layout, or adaptive layout if you wish, using the new Navigation Tree library. So this library provides an out-of-the-box solution to implement adaptive layouts without a boilerplate code. Now, in this example right here, we have a simple uh, home page where we are listing uh, multiple different items. When I click this uh, settings uh, button on the top, we are uh, navigated to the settings screen, we can go back, and when we select one of those uh, items, we are uh, navigating to the details screen instead. So, pretty simple and a straightforward navigation structure. However, when I now uh, rotate this uh, screen, you will notice that now automatically we are going to see uh, both of these uh, destinations on our screen, because now there is enough uh, space in the width to display multiple different screens or destinations. Now, in this case, uh, we can see a default uh, placeholder screen for our detail screen, which will be visible if we don't select uh, any one of those uh, items in our list. So from here, if I now try to click a settings uh, button, then you will notice that uh, our settings uh, screen will animate uh, automatically from the right side. And if I now click one of those uh, items from this uh, list, uh, then our details screen will appear right away. Which is great, right? And we can now of course uh, go back to our home screen. And if I now click uh, go back from here, we will see that default placeholder for our details screen as well. So now I'm gonna uh, open up uh, my project, which I have already prepared, and to show you how easy it is to implement uh, adaptive layout in your app. So, as you can see, this is our project, so we can start from our domain package. So we have a simple uh, data class that represents uh, one of those uh, items from our uh, home screen, right? So here we have uh, 10 different items that we are displaying in our home screen. So pretty self-explanatory, okay? Uh, next, let's see our navigation package. So in our navigation package, we have defined uh, here three different uh, screens. So we have a seal class called screen, and then three nested classes, or two actual objects and one data class, which accepts an argument. Also, our screen class inherits this uh, nav key, because it is important to actually mark uh, each and every destination in our app with this uh, nav key, so that our navigation tree library can understand our uh, destination structure. Okay, so that's our uh, actual screen class. Now let's open up the navigator. So this is a class which I have prepared uh, and created uh, by myself so that we can manage our backstack more easily. Now, with the new navigation tree library, we have a full control over our backstack. And with that control comes a responsibility. So I'm going to explain you here why I have uh, two different kind of uh, functions that uh, I'm using for navigation. So we have a regular navigate to function that basically adds our new uh, destination on top of the back stack. And we also have a specific uh, and a custom function used to navigate to our detail screen specifically. And why is that? Well, I'm going to show you. But before that, let me here uh, walk you through this uh, whole project. And then I'm going to explain in more details uh, why do we need actually this function uh, for our detail screen. Okay. So practically, those functions are used to uh, navigate uh, through our application or through our destination. So we are basically adding new destinations in our backstack and we are removing uh, those uh, destinations from the backstack as well. So uh, the next screen here is the navigation graph. So this is the place where we host uh, all our uh, destinations, right? So we have the nav display function, which is used to host uh, all these uh, entry providers, and uh, each and every entry provider represents a destination in our app, right? So the first uh, parameter that we are passing here is the actual backstack, and the backstack will be received from our actual navigator class. So our navigator class, which I have already shown you, uh, will contain and hold our actual backstack. We are also uh, injecting that uh, same uh, navigator as a singleton in our app, and we are using it across our app as a single instance navigator, right? So from our navigation graph, we are uh, injecting that navigator and we are using it to pass our actual backstack to the nav display. And also we are triggering its uh, go back function whenever a user clicks uh, that uh, system back uh, button so that we can uh, handle that scenario and uh, remove the current screen from the backstack. Now, the next parameter here is a scene strategy. So the scene strategy is used to determine uh, which scene to render a list of entries. Right, so here we are passing this list and detail strategy, uh, which uh, actually calls this remember list uh, detail scene strategy function. One of the parameters that we are passing right here is called directive. So this directive parameter basically tells our navigation tree library how to handle a list and details uh, screens in our app. Okay. And that directive is also created right here, based on this uh, window adaptive info. So window adaptive info is uh, practically a class that uh, holds an uh, information about uh, our current screen, okay? And based on that information, the navigation tree library will uh, automatically decide how to arrange our uh, 
destinations in our app based on the available width of the screen. So we are passing that information to this directive or to this uh, calculate uh, pane scaffold directive function so that uh, we can know and uh, calculate uh, the proper directive for our uh, list and details strategy. Okay? Now, besides this uh, list and details strategy, for each and every screen here that we have uh, passed as an entry provider, uh, we need to define a couple of things, like this uh, metadata parameter. Okay? So, in our case, the home screen is a list pane, right? And our details screen is the detail pane. So these uh, metadata parameters are important because uh, we ourselves uh, need to mark uh, which one of those destinations in our app is a list and which one is details. So that the navigation tree library can uh, properly display them in our adaptive layout when our app has uh, enough space so that our application can properly display multiple different screens at the same time when possible. And our list uh, pane function right here also accepts the detail placeholder which is a composable content to display in the details pane in the case when there is no any other nav entry representing the details pane in the backstack. The detail placeholder is a practically data screen, which we are seeing immediately after we uh, rotate our screen, when we haven't selected any one of those items from our list screen or from our details screen. So this is that placeholder, which we have defined in this detail placeholder. And this actual placeholder is just a simple composable function that in this case displays only a single text element. So that's how it looks like. It's very uh, easy and uh, simple. And uh, at the end, we also have this um, uh, settings uh, screen uh, to which we are passing the metadata called the extra pane. So this uh, extra pane practically allows us to define and specify that uh, third screen, which uh, we can optionally display when there is a room on our screen based on the screen width. And that's how our uh, navigation graph uh, actually looks like. So now we have covered uh, all these um, classes and Kotlin files inside the navigation package and a domain package. Now let's uh, switch over to some other different uh, files in here. So we have the coin module. I'm not going to explain here uh, too much because you already are familiar with the coin uh, dependency injection library. Here we are just providing that navigator as a singleton and we are using it to actually uh, manage our backstack and navigate between our screens. Uh, next we have the screen package in which we are hosting all these kind of uh, screen composables. So let's first open up the home screen, for example. So you have already seen how this uh, actual destination looks like. So the home screen is uh, pretty straightforward. On the top, we have the settings button, which is used to navigate our user to the settings screen. And we have the lazy column to which we are uh, passing all these users so that we can navigate to our details screen. On the top of our uh, screen, we have uh, two different uh, lambdas, which uh, are used to navigate to a different kind of uh, destination. So we have the navigate to details and navigate to. I'm going to explain that the navigate to details function in a moment. Uh, let me just here open up the last uh, screen, or actually the details screen first. So here, um, except that details uh, screen placeholder, we also have the screen that displays this information, like the ID and the name, and we have a button to go back to our previous destination. And of course, the settings screen, which just uh, displays that uh, text, and the button to go back as well. As simple as that. Now, let me show you here uh, what will happen if uh, we try to navigate to the details screen by using that uh, navigate to function instead. So let's call the navigator.navigate2 and pass here the details screen uh, as a destination. So we can pass here also that the user ID as a parameter, right? Uh, now let's launch our app. I'm going to open up here uh, this um, landscape mode. So if I click the John Doe, the first uh, element, then we are adding that uh, details screen instance with that specific user ID on top of our backstack. And if I press uh, another item, I'm adding yet another item on top of our existing backstack. And if I click the third time, I'm adding here the third instance of the details screen on top of our back stack. So from here, when we click the back uh, button, as you can see, now we are going back to that previous uh, details uh, instance. And if I click that uh, once again, we are now going back to our first item. And only then we're going to go back uh, all the way uh, to our uh, details placeholder. So that's the main reason why I have used uh, a custom function in here specifically for the details of the screen, so that we can properly uh, handle our backstack. So in this case, we are not just uh, adding yet another details screen uh, on top of our backstack. First, we are checking whether the existing details uh, instance is available in our backstack. And if it is, then we are replacing that existing instance with a new one. Or otherwise, we are adding the new instance instead. And with this approach, whenever we uh, launch this application, no matter how many uh, items of uh, those users we actually select uh, from our home screen, we will be able to go back to our uh, default placeholder with just one click. 
without duplicating our details instance in the backstack. So the main reason for that is because uh, now we have full control over our backstack and uh, we have the responsibility to handle our uh, destinations by ourselves. And there it is. So that's how you can easily implement uh, a, a multi-pane or uh, adaptive layout uh, in your application. So it's uh, very uh, easy as you have seen. The animations are here specified by default. We can also customize them as well. And everything here looks uh, great. So I'll be sure to share the source code of this uh, project on my GitHub profile. So you can check out the link uh, down in the video description. Also, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Uh, what do you think about this uh, new approach of uh, handling uh, adaptive layout with uh, the new Navigation 3 library? Don't forget to leave a like to this video if you want to see more interesting content like this. And uh, thank you for watching.